Hi, this is Heather, and this is a Learn It Tuesday video. Uh, this week I just wanted to show you a kind of neat little trick that I picked up teaching a class at the scrapbook page last week. Um, one of the things that I like about teaching classes is that I almost always learn something. And this was a question, came about because of a question that one of the students had in the class. Um, and I thought it was just super cool and some of the things that you could do with it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle. And so I go over here to the circle tool and then let's draw the circle. And um, to keep it a circle, if you hold down the shift key, that'll make it a circle. And then I'm going to add some text and it doesn't matter what font, um, just whichever font you like. Um, and I'm going to do something really boring for this one, um, just so you can kind of see. This little, um, it kind of looks like a plus sign here on your text, you want to grab that with your mouse. You want to put your mouse right over it, grab it, and if you take it up here to your circle, you can move it on top of your circle. And what's going to cut is just the text, not the circle. Um, but some of the other things that you can do with it is you can move it, depending on how you have your cursor. If you hold your cursor just right, you can get it on the inside of your circle, which is pretty fun. Um, you can draw a wavy line, um, several different ways to do that in Silhouette software, but let's just do this one real fast, kind of a beachy wave, and we can take our same text and drag it down here and attach it to this line. And once it's on there, you can still continue to edit the text. Uh, I think it's a pretty neat little trick. And the question that um, the student had was that she was trying to get the text on the inside of the circle. And playing, we, we came up with an alternative for her, but playing with it tonight, what I figured out is that really you just have to get your mouse in the right place. It wants to go to that outside of the circle first, but if you pull your mouse up enough, it does pop to the inside before it completely detaches again. So. Um, that's kind of fun to play around with, some different things you can do with it. Um, I made one with my son's name, and then I went ahead and I welded it. And again, what cuts is just this word, Andy, not the circle around it. So if you did want the circle to cut, what my suggestion would be is to draw your circle, and then copy it and paste it in place and try to line them up right on top of each other and you might need to use your arrow keys to get it just perfect. And then go ahead and type your text. And I'm going to type a new one here. Make it just a, well, we'll make it smaller once we get it in there if we need to. Come on, sneak in there just right, there we go. And I think that's about right, so I'm going to weld that again. And as you can see, I've still got the circle here. I'm going to move it just real quick so you can see the gray one underneath it. And this took me a little bit of trial and error to be able to get the love you with a circle um, to cut just right. So let me show you kind of what I ended up with here. Um, you can select all of love you and you want to make a compound path, which is under the modify menu, um, it's also under the object menu up at the top of the screen, make compound path. And the reason that you want to do that and not group is that you want the silhouette software to treat it as one individual um, cut image versus just some group together cut images. And it, it treats them a little bit differently. So we're going to select the love you and our circle and we're going to crop. And what that does is that kind of crops the, the outside of the love you. And I'm going to undo here so you can see this. Right here where the bottom of the L is sticking out, there's a few other places. Um, so it kind of crops it real nice. But you see it took away our circle again. So we can click on this circle and go into our cut settings menu and tell it that we want to enable cutting on this particular piece here. So now we've got this nice, um, they're kind of, form to each other versus here where we've got parts of the, the A sticking out. Um, so if we select everything again and make this whole piece a compound path, let's go check it and see what it's going to look like. And I love fill for checking things. 
um, because you can really see what is put together and what's not. So by doing that you can see, I think that when this cuts that you will actually have this little part here still stick with you and it'll be, the, the blue will be what you're left with. So um, I think that's pretty fun. Um, you can do some, some other kind of crazy things. Um, if we go over here, I've got a Starburst. It's a um, Studio Calico digital file uh, that's a Starburst file. And you can kind of think outside the box here and um, type some text. And really whatever you want it to be. And you can attach it to the Starburst. And let's try to sneak it on the inside here. I know you can do this. There we go. Um, so now we're on the inside and you can see that it just keeps wrapping around and around and around. And I don't know how useful this is when it just keeps coming back. But you could, and I'm just going to do the whole thing with periods here, you could kind of come up with a neat different cut based off of a cut that you've already got by using periods or colons or slashes. Um, really kind of any any sort of dot type thing that you would like to make a, a different different image. This would be neat to um, use the negative space when you're done cutting if you did an entire one of just the dots. Um, I hope you learned something. It wasn't a super in-depth topic today but I think that this is a neat little trick that you can do with any image that you've got in your Silhouette Studio and I hope you tune back in next week again for another Learn It Tuesday.